David Bizard here, and you are watching Powertech 10. If you'd care to give me a few minutes of your time, I'll give you the benefit of nearly 60 years of race winning engine building. Now, before we get going, there are a few things I need to explain here. First, the competition to win a book where I asked people for the weight reduction. Now, that's really what I want to know. I do not want entries which say what the rod weighs now. I want you to guess what the weight reduction was. So all of those of you who made a, an entry that suggested the rod weight, do it again and tell me how much you think the rod was lightened by. Now we're going to do the same thing with the rods I show today. Anybody who can guess how much the beam work reduced the weight of the rod, that is not the rod weight, that is how much it reduced it, right? And you've got a much better chance of winning this because it's a smaller amount, right? We'll get a book, entries by March the 1st, right? In this video, I'm showing bolt removal. Now the Chrysler rods have a plain bolt shank. Some rods, like some of the Chevy rods, have a knurled bolt shank. Do not try this process with a knurled bolt because probably three times out of ten, maybe more, it won't work. Right? It won't realign the bolt cap accurately enough. Also, now some of you may be out there with wave lock bolts. I've never tried it with a wave lock bolt. That's an ARP deal. But I think it would probably work. It's up to you to see. Anyway, with that, on with the video. Just as a reminder here, before we get going on matters of the block, let me remind you that we've got a book up for grabs here. If you can guess how much lighter this rod is here with the, the wrist pin end and the top part of the beam blended in like this, that's to compare it with this rod here. Now we've got the wrist pin end almost done. I still got a chamfer these edges yet. And we've got the top of the beam done. It's time to turn our attention to this part of the beam. There's something that we can help actually increase the rod's reliability. Where the bolt has been inserted and to stop it turning when it's torqued up, there's a recess cut. And the bottom of this recess here forms a notch. Not good to have notches in rods. Because that's a notch there, this here has been applied to strengthen that. Now, what that means is that this rod in this area here is the strength of the notch. And that breaks because it fatigues over a small area. Now, if we remove metal from here, mostly from here, right down to almost that notch. What we do is we spread the bending over a bigger area. Consequently, the rod is more reliable and better yet, it's a lot lighter. So that's the next thing we're going to address. Right. Now I want you, in the next shot, I want you to take very careful note of this here. Now, does that look different? You'll notice that the polish has gone all the way to there. In fact, let me just show you how that looks. There's the polish side there. And there we are. I've turned it. Now see how there's much more bolt head showing there. And it's the, the beam itself has got a lot thinner here. Didn't need to be as strong as it was. 
there is a different view of the area that we are working on. Now I'm going to show you how to do it. The first thing you're going to do is to make making sure it's all clean, especially the bolts because you're going to reuse them, is to torque up the bolt on the side you are not working on, like so. Now that will allow us to pretty much safely remove the other bolt. Using a punch like this, with any sharp edges taken off here, we now carefully remove this bolt. Now remember, we are going to use them, so we want a punch that is smaller than the thread. And we carefully knock it out, like so. Now here's our critical area just here. This radius here we have to avoid touching other than to give it a polish when we finished doing this. Right, no scratches in it because that's going to form a notch. This is the cutter I'm going to use to take material away from there. So let's have at it. And here's how it looks after it's cuttered. You'll see that black line there. That's leaving about 30, a 30 second of an inch between this face here and to where I've cut to. That's just to register the bolt head. And here I've finished the cuttering. Pretty rough at the moment. But not for a cylinder head port, but for a rod it is. Here I finished off with the, the emery disc, right? It's best to have one with a ragged edge and then it kind of acts as a safety deal to, so that you don't damage this the bolt head face. Now we cannot leave the rod with a finish going across this way. Although it's a very slim chance one of those scratches might be deep enough to start um, a fatigue fracture. It's unlikely but let's not take a chance on it. So we will finish this with an emery roll. And lastly, a semi-worn out flap wheel. Started off as a one inch one from Goodson. Well, there we go, that's the beam polished. One more little job to do and then we're done and it's time to reinstall the bolt. Your next move is to get yourself some three to 400 grit, preferably some that's already been used and semi-worn out, and a needle file like this. What we're gonna do here is wrap, is wrap the needle file like this and polish this here. Thoroughly grease the bolt. Make sure you've got this register square with the notch in the rod. Then
tap it into position like that. Turn the rod over. And to make sure the bolt is thoroughly seated, See, you can see that I'm applying enough torque to seat the bolt. Right, it's probably only about 10 foot pounds at the most. Right, now the bolt's seated. Now just finally torque it up. There we go. So here's our rod with the beam done. And the little end. Let me turn it over so you can see both sides of that. How much do you think we've lightened it over this rod here? Right, let me just swing that round so you can see the little end. Now, if you're going to guess the answers, remember I want the amount it's been reduced by, not the amount that the rod weighs. You can either guess the total amount we've removed from the rod or the extra amount that we've removed with the beam lightning. So go for it. Our next move is to take a look at a block modification that is very rarely applied to blocks. I'm going to estimate that if we spin our engine to about 7,000 RPM, it could be worth as much as about 10 to 12 horsepower. And it's all free. Let me explain. I want you to take a look at the edges on the bottom of each of the bores. And while you're doing that, I want you to consider just how much activity there is within the block and crankcase when the engine's turning even 2000 rpm air has to rush up the bore and down the bore each time the piston goes up and down well at six or seven thousand rpm the piston is traveling at mid-stroke at quite a velocity and is acting as a giant intake having to suck air up after it but this sharp edge here is impeding the flow of air right so what we're going to do is we're going to radius this off so that the airflow up the bore is much easier now I have to say it makes a bigger difference than you think because the air is laden with oil so that's why that simple mod of putting a radius on here results in so much extra power this is what i will show you how it's done in the next episode of mission impossible well that about does it for this edition of paratech 10. now don't forget we're doing this project the mission impossible project for uncle tony I'm way older than he is. It just seems strange calling him Uncle Tony. Is all for St. Jude's, right? The more you subscribe, the more you like, and the more you share, the more we will get for St. Jude's children. So please like, subscribe, and share, notify, ring the bell, whatever. We need you to help us help those kids. Thank you for watching.